Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are going to be talking about lateral force. What does lateral force mean? What is the physical significance of lateral force? And how can we utilize this data of lateral force versus slip angle? What is the idea behind this data and how can we use it for our suspension design? And it depends on what kind of vehicle we are designing. If it's a race car, if it's a buggy or if it's a day-to-day -day commuter. So we are going to understand the physical a phenomenon related with the lateral force and how to utilize it to the best efforts right so first of all let's understand what is lateral force and slip angle real quick we have discussed this in our previous video as well so this is a tire this is trying to turn in this direction so this arrow this uh, defines angle of heading and this direction this arrow defines angle of travel Direction of travel and direction of heading, sorry, not angle, direction of tra uh, travel and direction of heading. So essentially, our, whenever our tire moves like this, if you are trying to move in this way, uh, the entirety of the tire is in this direction, but the contact patch which is in contact with the road, the rubber which is in contact with the road, will kind of stay in, the, uh, will have a tendency because of the interaction between the road and the rubber molecules it will hold the uh, tire in this direction. So the contact patch over here will somewhat look like this. I mean, you can try to visualize this by using your hand. And if you move your hand slightly in this direction, so the front hand is the tire and the backwards hand is the road. And if you are moving this, uh, uh, this hand in this direction, you can feel the skin which is in contact with this hand is essentially trying to stay in uh, that particular location itself and not trying to move. So that's what happens in the tire contact patch as well. And this uh, interaction between the tarmac of the road and the rubber itself uh, generates a lateral force in this direction. This direction. So if we are turning in this direction, lateral force will be generated in this direction, which will act at 90 degrees. Uh, from this point like that's the center of the tire one important assumption that we are assuming over here is that we do not have any other angles acting on it we do not have camber angle uh, acting on it because when we have camber angle employed then there is another force acting on the tire which is camber thrust so in this particular situation we are just understanding pure lateral force uh, without any camber angle involved like tire is straight and then we are making the turns so, and the direction between the direction of heading and direction of travel is given by alpha and it's called a slip angle because the tire is essentially slipping, right? So this is what is the physical meaning of lateral force and slip angle. So what happens is tire manufacturers, uh, they have their own tire testing machine. It can be a belt type of tire testing machine or a drum type of tire testing machine. What happens is they have different profiles of tires, performance tires or regular tires for your day-to-day -day commuter cars and they do testing on all those tires. I'm not talking about the endurance testing and fatigue testing like after how many revolutions it will fail on how much load, no, not that. But what essentially happens is for each tire, they apply different kinds of loads and they go through each load on different slip angles and they have load cells in their hub through those load cells they calculate the amount of lateral force aligning moment uh, and different other kind of moments uh, which you can uh, have with the moments and forces which up and apply on the tire itself when the car is moving all those forces and moments are calculated using that machine using the load cells in the machine uh, they have different calibration rules so we are not going to discuss about that but that's the idea so from that machine only we get this graph this is lateral force versus slip angle and the shape is usually like this right so here we are having two graphs from two different tires this is tire one and this is tire two so what it means is uh, if you look at tire one it means that like at the same amount of slip angle if we do something like this if you assume it to be like four degrees and the same amount of uh, slip angle for both the tires tire one generates lesser amount of lateral force right and for the same amount of uh, slip angle tire two generates a higher amount of lateral force 
what does that mean this means that whenever if we are designing a race car or a formula student car and we are trying to we want it to have the maximum cornering potential so whenever we are going through the turn we want it to hold the road as much as possible and we higher the lateral force you will have a better tendency to corner through the turns at a higher speed and at a higher uh, it can be more steeper or a more curvy radius of that particular turn at a higher speed you can uh, corner the vehicle more easily without slipping or losing grip that's what it means so in that particular case tire 2 would be more suitable for our race car because at lower slip angle we are generating more lateral force more lateral force means greater the road holding of that tire in at that much slip angle but think about it if we have another tire which goes something like this so it's not the perfect graph i have driven uh, wrong but like assuming it to be tire 3 but think about it now we are getting the peak at assuming at about 5 degree slip angle what does that mean so if you want to select between tire 2 and tire 3 which one which tire would you go for so tire 3 goes at a higher lateral force but it does that at 5 degree of slip angle that means the tire has to generate a higher amount of slip angle to have that amount of lateral force for cornering which is fine yeah we can turn the steering more and have more amount of lateral force right but then this means that p3 the third tire would be under steering ideally in perfect conditions we would want to steer our vehicle uh, the tires to move in that particular direction and the slip angle should be zero and the road should be holding the tire with the maximum amount of force it can at all times at whatever the steering angle uh, it is and without any slip angle but we do not live in a perfect world tires are made of rubber rubber is a very compliant material so that's why we are going to have a slip angle and that's why we are going to use tire 2 instead of tire 3 because it generates a higher amount of lateral force at lesser amount of lateral force compared to tire 3 but at a lower slip angle that means that will be there will be lesser of a tendency of our car to understeer i hope you guys understood this concept and if you guys have any questions comments or concerns regarding whatever we discuss in this video please let me in the comment section below and i'll see you all in the next video see ya